Hello and welcome to the enums tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning about enums, what they are, why you would use them, and how. To. So the first question is, what is an enum? Well, I've made an enum example here. So over here in this FSM, in my variables tab, I made a enum called my enum. First of all, the word enum is shorthand for enumerator. Over here on this FSM in my variables tab, I've made an example enum called my enum. You could name it whatever you want. This is just the variable that holds the value of this enum. And the enum I've chosen to create here is actually using a value from root motion's final IK asset. In their final IK asset, they have an enum type they, they call full body biped chain. And essentially what it is, you could see here, is a way of targeting parts of the limbs on their assets. So you have the left arm, the right arm, the left leg, and the right leg. Okay, and you can see that these are all the values. You could just as easily have an enum that says something like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You could really name these things whatever you want because what's actually happening behind the scenes, if I just take a picture of this really quick, what you have is a list of values. You have your left arm, your right arm, your left leg, and right leg. Now, these look like strings of text, and they are, but this is just what's shown to us on the interface of the Unity editor. Because what's happening behind the scenes is this is just a standard zero-based index. So this is zero, this is one, and this is two, and this is three. So why would you want this? Why wouldn't you just make, say, an array of strings or just using string variables outright. And the reasons for that are simple. First of all, processing numbers is a lot faster than processing strings. There's less information to parse through. And also the order in which they're arranged is easier for the computer to understand as opposed to the arbitrary order you might want to set with string variables. So it's fast. If the numbers are faster, then you might think, well, why don't I just use an int value Say if you wanted to come over here and just create a new int and call it days of the week. And then you could say, well, Sunday will be zero. So if I put two, this would be Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is, is that once you come in and start programming this, you're going to have to remember all of that. You're going to have to remember each of those numbers. And that extra mental work, however small it may be, can really add up because you start looking at things that start to feel a little arbitrary as you navigate your code. It's easier to read the text itself, left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg, makes a lot more sense in the moment than just zero, one, two. Okay, so it's about the readability as well as the processing speed. So you get both. You get something that is being processed as fast as numbers, but as you're actually designing things, you get the benefit of seeing natural language representation of it, right? The words. And then lastly, the cherry on top of all this is that if you ever are using something that is run off of strings to represent values, you're running the risk of misspelling something where say, for example, I wanted to say that this was the right leg value. I would have to make sure that right leg was spelled the same every single time, capital R, capital L, space in between, nothing at the end. Because if I ever said, something like that, my system would not work at this point because it wasn't spelled the same. Working with string values requires you to have 100% consistency. And this is not the same as this. And this is not the same as this. You can't even see this, but there's a space at the end. And that one little space can throw everything off. Okay, so having this lets you ensure the consistency. You're never going to misspell anything because you never have to type anything in. You're just selecting things from a menu like this. So that's one less point of failure. The trade-off here being that you need to set all of these up front and that it's not something that is so easily dynamically set during runtime. So the first example I showed you here, the enum that final IK uses, let me show you how I got to this. So if I wanted to create a new enum, I'd come here, create an enum, say my new enum. And at first, we have to select an enum type because if you don't, the value can't be set. You have to know the type before you can enter the value. So the enum type, when you select it, 
the Unity Editor is going to give you an option of every single one num that's currently in this project. And it has them categorized here. So, for example, the root motion one that I was using a moment ago was located here in root motion because that's the company that makes the asset. And then it was here in their final IK. And then I put their full body biped chain. So when I select this, now I have options for my values, this left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg. So I could select these and I can set them at runtime with other enum type actions. So let me just show you really quick too that you can also come over to, for example, Pixel Crushers. This is the company that makes the dialogue system for Unity a tutorial that you could check out here on the channel for Playmaker integration. We just put that out recently. So I come over here to dialogue system and let's just say field type. So they have this enum called field type and the value it can be is text, number, Boolean files, localization, actor, item, location. Now, again, it's the same thing. Each of these is just a number. It's like a list of ints. We have zero, one, two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just this part that is being changed for the user to see, but is never actually seeing during gameplay. So let me show you how to make our own enums, and then we'll use a couple of these actions so I could show you how they work. It's very simple, but so to create our own enums, I'm going to come up here to Playmaker, Add-ons, Tools, Enum Creator Wizard. Okay, and then we have our enum creator here. So it's a pretty simple layout. Most of this you don't have to pay too much attention to. You can set your own namespace if you want to, and this just says where the enum file is going to be saved to. So we're going to start a new enum, and we're just going to call this one days of the week. It's a classic example. Okay, and then I'm going to add an item to it, and I'll say Sunday. Add another one, Monday, another one, Tuesday, okay, and I'll hit save. Okay, so Unity's compiling. Our num is created. I'm just going to dock this really quick. And if I go over and make a new game object and just add an FSM, come over to our variables tab, and if I want to make a new num called day of the week, right? So day of the week is a, an enum value that we could pick from the days of the week. So the enum type, remember here is where the namespace is. So this one is com.mygame. So I can com, my game, days of the week. And now that I've selected that, you can see that the values that are available to me are Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So that's how you create your own enum using the enum creator wizard. And if you want to keep adding things to it, you can. You can come back over here. So actually, if I close this, let me just show you really quick. Playmaker, add-ons, tools, and I'm creator wizard. You can also select ones that I've worked on before, right? So when I open this window, it just has a new enum that we could start working on, right? It says my enum. But up here, it says editable enums in this project. You might have to open this little drop down here. But you can see that days of the week is here. So if I Go ahead and edit it. It says you are editing an existing num, and here's where I can add additional values. So I could come in and hit add Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, free day, set to. Okay. And it loops back around to Sunday. So I can hit save, let Unity compile for a sec. And I'm just going to go ahead and close this now. You can see that our values have updated. Okay, so let's let's give this a spin really quick. We're going to just go over a couple actions because it's actually pretty straightforward. In our action browser, I'm just going to type in a num. So you can see all our actions here. And really, it's just about a way of tagging things or defining things. So you can see that the actions available to us are very much around this logic of whether or not and a num is kind of true or false. So instead of relying on a bunch of bool values, you know, it's very common to end up with a bunch of bool values that all represent the same category. Like if you had an array of bools that said, is Monday, is Tuesday, is Wednesday, et cetera, et cetera, you could just use an a num instead, and you wouldn't have to set all the other bools to false. You could just rely on one in num to come back as true. And that's why we have stuff like the enum switch. So the enum type here, we could say 
is our com, my game, days of the week, right? And the num variable, we could say, is our day of the week. You can create some switches. So we'll say there's uh, three of them. And we'll say that only on uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays does something happen, right? So you can have a, an num switch where it says, like, weekend, right? And it's like the same for all of these. You know, and then if it's anything else, you could have it do something else. So you can have Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday all send for weekday, right? So all these can have that. It's the same thing as a string switch or an int switch or any other type of switch action that we have except it just uses enums. And so of course, you know, setting the enum value, we could say the enum type again, com, my game, days of the week, day of the week, and you could set the enum value here, right? So we could say the enum value is Tuesday. And we should expect that when our switch fires off, that it should send to weekday, right? Because we said it's Tuesday. So I press play. Yep, sends to weekday, right? And you can also do and a num compare, right? So if you want to say that your days of the week, you're going to compare it to, say, only do something on Mondays, right? Uh, and if it's equal, all right, we'll, we'll put this one over here. We'll say, I'm going to set as the start state, OK? We're going to compare it to Monday. And if it's equal, then you're going to say 8life. Uh, but if it's not equal, be semi okay with life, right? And you could do the set and num value again. And say it's Monday. Okay, we're going to set our day of the week. And surprise, surprise, it was Monday, so we hate life. I actually don't really hate Mondays, and I really love my life. Uh, Mondays are actually pretty cool. I always see them as a way to start anew. It's kind of like a breath of fresh air in a lot of ways. Uh, but I guess if you, <clears throat> well, let's not go down that road. Okay, so you have get FSM a num, set FSM a num, and debug a num just sends to, sends to the playmaker log window based off of num values. Okay, and nums are pretty straightforward. But now you at least know that you can come over to your tools and use your num creator wizard uh, to create your own nums because being able to have a uh, consistent way of like a human readability sort of value uh, without the sort of all the problems that come with using string values where you could be misspelling things or accidentally putting in like I showed you those little invisible spaces in nums in that way that they really have you protected um, sometimes yeah it does take that extra little effort to come over here and add the value to the num itself like we wanted to add an extra day here or remove a day or something like that it could really it could really pay off in just holding a more stable system. And then, of course, you do have the flexibility to convert and num to string. So this convert and num to string lets you change your, let's see if I change this, days of the week, right? So we have our day of the week. You could set it as a string variable. You could say day of the week underscore string, right? And that'll spit out a string value for you. So let me just turn off this and num compare, right? And if I play this, you'll see that now we have a string variable that says the exact same thing our num says. Okay, so you do still have the option for flexibility if you wanted to work outside of the rigid sort of integer list that enums are behind the scenes. Okay, and that's how you can use enums in your Playmaker project. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.